chapter 23 on what we call geometric optics. And this includes lenses. And this will be part of lab, lab 10. And then for chapter 24, what to do next will be weight optics, that'll be labs 9 and 9A. So this is also, so this lab is strictly on lenses, uh, reflection, and such. So to get no further, uh, what we're going to use on this is we, we take light, it travels what you call a ray. All right, chapter 22, uh, we talked about light being an electromagnetic wave, EM wave. All right, but now we're doing this as we call a, a ray model of light. And the example would be if we have a surface and we have a light bounce on the surface and reflects off. This is reflection, incident, reflected, uh, for perfect, for a smooth surface. We then define, this is what we call a normal, and the angle of incidence is measured relative to the perpendicular. The angle of reflection is also measured incident. And for, per, for normal reflection, angle of incidence equals angle of reflection. So incidence reflects. So we are staying. This is a mirror. Light bounces off the mirror. And that's what we have. So <clears throat> this is an air. Uh, this is glass. Right? That's normal reflection. Okay. <clears throat> Next, we're going to move on to, um, we're going to be sk skipping um, mirrors. Now, I'm just going to, because the principle is the same as lenses, but it's going to be easier dealing with lenses than with mirrors as far as the science is concerned. All right. So, we're skipping uh, sections. Section 23.3, so skip 23.3, and this is on mirrors, and we're going to be dealing mostly with um, lenses. So, dealing with lenses then uh, is the next part. And what we have there is that if we have, let's say this is air and this is glass, right? Air, if we have a wave, a light beam hit there, it's going to be bent when it goes from air to glass. And this principle of bending is refraction. Okay, so that's the principle of refraction. And the way it works is that in here, the speed of light is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And in glass, it may be V in glass is 2 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And the difference, so it actually slows down in the glass. And the speed, so this is C, C 
so V and air, and we define the speed, the index of refraction N is the speed of light C divided by the C V in the material. So that would be, for this, for glass, it would be 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second over 2 times 10 to the 8th meters per second, which would be 1.5. So that's approximately the index refraction for glass. Now, we have a table which shows index refraction for various materials. And here, and we have air is approximately one. The air has N is approximately 1.00, meaning air, the speed of light is not very much changed at all in that regards. Now, if we have <clears throat> so that's the index refraction, and we can measure this by this is the angle of incidence, this is the angle of refraction, so not reflection, refraction. So this is refraction. Light is going to go from one medium to another, and this relationship is that given as then N1, so this will be 1, 2 is what we're coming out, N1 sine theta 1 equals N2 sine theta 2. Okay? So that's what we have there. All right, so let's do one example then. So let's say we have air, go from air to glass, all right? So say we come in at an angle of 30 degrees. Calculator. So, let's clear this up a little bit. So, N1 is 1, theta 1 is 30, and the sine, so we'll do sine of 30 degrees. N2 is 1.5, what is the angle Two that it comes out at. So we would solve for then in this case, this is what we call Snell's formula. And this is the relationship. All right. So to solve this particular problem, I'll leave that there. Um, I will erase this a minute, put this up here, and maybe change the pen so I got oh. So we end up with solving this. We have one times the sine of 30 degrees equals 1.5 times the sine of the angle coming out. So that would be right. That would be the sign of the angle. So that would be then erase 
disoyovum. Sine of 30 is 0.5, so that'd be 0.5 over 1.5, which is 0.33 is sine of that. We would then take the sine inverse of 0.33 to get the degrees. So then do it on my calculator. We have this in degrees. So 0.33, oops. Would be 19.2 degrees. So you enter, so this is what this side equals. Um, we then take the sign inverse and we get this to be 19.2 degrees. So that would be the angle here is 19.2 degrees. All right? So that's Snell's law, which is this expression here. All right, so that's an example of that. Um, another way you could do it is if you measured the angle and knowing that this is air, so let's do another example. I'll write this. Um, say we don't know what um, this is. So it's some substance, and this is air, or N1 is 1. And we measure this to be 30 degrees again. And we measure this one to be, come out at 10 degrees. So instead of solving for this, we're trying to solve for that. So that would be N1 sine theta one over N2 over sine theta two would give us N2. So that'd be one times the sine of 30 degrees over the sine of 10 degrees. So we'll take that. Um, well, that's 0.5. And then the sine. That's 0.174. And we end up with 2.9 as the index of the fraction, which would be very stark. This is getting to around something like diamond. Very high index of the fraction. So it's expanding it way into here, right? So that's what we're seeing. So that's how you can solve for the index of your fraction by measuring angle. So this is one way that you're doing it. You do an experiment, measure angle incidence, measure the angle refraction. And from there, you can actually get what N2 actually is. So that's that part there. Now, moving on from there. Okay, so we're going from a low index to a high index. All right, so what if we do something the other way around? All right. So say we do something different, get rid of this. All right, and we actually go from, from air to glass, we go from, let's say water, which is an index refraction of 1.33, to air, which is an index of one, and we go from the bottom up. So we're going from under the surface upwards. All right, what, is, what does the light do when it comes out? All right. Um, 
when the light comes out, say if it comes out at 45 degrees, this goes in at 45 degrees, what angle does this come out at? Is it gonna be bending away or forward? So we use the same formula. So in this case, this would be one and this is two. So we're going from higher index to lower index. And so in this case, it would be N1 would be 1.33 sine of 45 degrees equals N2, which is one times the sine of the air. So this is, this is water to air, all right? So this would be 1.33 times 0.707 by one is sine of the angle, which would be point nine four. So then we take And that is then theta two is 70, 70 degrees. So this air, this light would come out at 70 degrees. It actually would bend away from it. All right, so again, we're using Snell's formula. So we see it bends away. Now, what if we keep going out? What if we go farther and farther? All right, let's make the angle, instead of 45, we make it 50. Okay. So that'd be 50. And sine of 50 degrees. is 0.766 times 1.33 is 1.02. Well, if we take the sine of this angle, we cannot, the sine of an angle must be less than or equal to one. So if the light is, if this number is actually bigger than that, means that the light is no longer, not even, if it's 50 degrees, it's actually gonna be reflected back inwards. So none of it's gonna come out, it's actually going to bounce, come back inwards. And this is what we call total internal reflection. All right, now I'll go back to my other pen. And in this case, what we have here is that at a so-called critical angle, at some critical angle, The light is all bent back in. Now, how do we figure out that critical angle? Well, that critical angle is such that at one perfect angle, all the light actually goes along the edge and none of it transmits and none of it's really, it really just goes along the edge. This critical angle is given as sine theta critical equals N2 over N1, make sure, right. Where in this case, this would be air, 
and this would be water, and that would be 1 over 1.33, which is 0.75, and taking the sine inverse of 0.7, this is 49 degrees. So the critical angle for water is 49 degrees when you go from water to air. Otherwise, any angle greater than that, all of light will be reflected back. So that's a principle there. It's also a principle of uh, fiber optics. So in fiber optics, you have light, you have, say, a tube, a glass tube, and light just bounce back and forth in until it comes out. Or you have a laser beam and it bounces, so even if you bend it, because this is glass surrounded by some kind of sheet, the light always comes so Fiber optics are a perfect example of that. And this is what we call total internal reflection. And the critical angle is given by this, where again, N1 is greater than N2. So like water to air, glass to air, and so forth. So that's total internal reflection. That's part of fiber optics. All right, so moving on from there now. Okay. We now are going to deal with um, basically the last part of the section because we're not going to do combinations of lenses. It's not yet. Uh, so So for this part, lenses, which is section 23.7, and eight. And what we have here, if we have a lens, which has a focal length of some number, say 10 centimeters, meaning light from very far away, all focuses to one point, right? So this distance from here to here to where all the light focuses is the focal length. And so that's it there. So for a convex lens, Uh, which is thicker in the middle, that's that. If we have concave, then that's, and you'll see that in the lab, concave lens is such that it's thinner in the middle of the edge, and in this case, light spreads out, so the focal point is actually in front, so in this case, F would be, say, minus 10 centimeters. So for concave lens or diverging lens, then you have F is in front, that's minus 10 centimeters. Okay. And let's see here. Okay. So how does it all work? All right, so if you look at the simula lab simulations and such, um, and then particularly lab 10, we're gonna have different lenses. So if I have light, say an object, some distance away, Let's have this light source. Let's have a light. 
goes to the light source, it will form a real image on a screen over here. So it'll form an, an inverted image. So it'll be real and inverted. And real is in the sense that I can show this on a screen. Right? So then I have the light, light passes through the lens in such a way that it forms a real inverted image on a screen. This is this is what we're gonna get. We call this distance. Now I'll stick with the convention in the book. Um, which is D sub I for the image, or P sometimes, that's why I did the labs, and the object distance D sub O, or Q. So this is image, ob, object, I have to switch it around, object distance, image distance. All right, so, and the relationship between, uh, and I'm going to use P and Q because I don't have to use subscripts then, is 1 over P plus 1 over Q is equal to 1 over F. This is what we call the lens equation. So that's the so-called lens equation. And so let's do one example. So say I have light, I have Q, if P is 30 centimeters, all right? Then where will it form the image? So solve for this. Um, this is our lens expression. I can actually solve for this, so 1 over P, so 1 over Q equals 1 over F minus 1 over P. Um, and by rearranging variables, Q is equal to P minus F over P times F. So for solving, I would end up that. So in this case, Q would be equal to 30 minus 10 over 30 times 10, which would be 20. That's not right. Oh. Oh, yeah, put that one there. Yeah. That would be 1 over Q is this. Okay. So then Q would be the reciprocal. So let's let's fix that. This is actually one over Q. So Q would be P times F over P minus F. So in this case it'd be 30 times 10 over 30 minus 10, which would be 300 over 10 would be 30 centimeter. Oh, wait, 30, 30 minus 10, which would be 20, which would be 15 centimeters. Okay, right. So P is 30, F is 10, so it would be 30 minus 10 would be 300. So that would be Q. So Q would be 15 centimeters. Now another thing we can do is the magnification so this is the object height, HO, and this is the image height, HI. The magnification is defined as HI over HO, or it's actually inverted. So this would be 15 over 30 would be 1 half. So in this case, the object would actually be 1 half the original size, right? So, um, let's do another example related to this. Um, 
And in that case, let's put it, let me do something a little clearer. So again, we got our lens one over there. And so let me put up my two expressions. A little clearer than they were. So that's that, and then Q is P times F over P minus F. So let's pick P is in this case 12 centimeters, F is 10. What would be Q? All right, so we are pretty close to the lens. Um, so Q would be P times, that'd be 12 times 10 over 12 minus 10 would be 120 over two would be 60 centimeters. So Q would be 60 centimeters, so it'd be way out there. And in this case, the magnification um, which is H I over H O is also Q over P. And that would be 60 over 12 would be five times. So it'd be five times larger. All right. So that's the example there. All right. Now let's do one last one. Let's say I have, again, a focal length of 10. Um, and I put P at five centimeters away. So if focal length is 10, I put P at five. Where is the image gonna be? All right? So in this case, P is less than F. So we would have Q would be P times F would be five times 10 over five minus 10 would be 50 over negative five would be negative 10 centimeters. So actually the image would be 10 centimeters in front. So actually if it's closer than that, the light comes in, actually spreads out and we'd actually have an image distance in front of the lens. So Q in this case would be minus 10. All right, so that's the case of say a magnifying glass. If you hold a glass really close to your eye, the image is because this is also negative, the image will be uh, upright and what we call virtual. Meaning you cannot show it on the screen because the image is in front of the lens. But you can see with your eyeball because of the fact that a magnifying glass, if you hold it closer, your eyes and the lens so you can actually accommodate for that. And so you look at light, something through like a magnifying glass, because you want to see it upright, upright anyway. If you want a bigger print, you don't want it upside down. So this is the principle of a magnifying glass. All right. So that's what happens when we have P is less than F, you get Q is negative. So these are our expression for lens formula for Q, and this is our lens formula as far as that is concerned. So um, you can do the same thing with combinations of lenses, and I'll leave it at that. One last thing I want to cover here is uh, for lenses, right? So we have a particular focal length, P, you know, F. Then we define what we call the power in capital, is the power of a lens. And this is actually for um, optometrists. And so, this is where F is in meters. So F is in meters. So if you have 10 centimeters, this corresponds to 0.1 meters. P is one over F 
So that would be one over 0.1, which would be 10. And it's in units of diopters. All right, so 10 diopters. All right, so this is for convex lenses. Uh, if we had F was minus 10, then P would be one over minus 0.1, which would be minus 10 diopters. And that would be a concave lens. So that is uh, chapter 23, pretty well summarized as far as that's concerned. And that pretty much covers the section. Okay, so that is chapter, uh, that's only chapter 24. This is the first chapter for exam three. Okay, so have a good day and we'll talk to you.